cellular concept gsm architecture and gsm radio agenda points are cellular concept fundamentals of gsm gsm specifications gsm architecture its elements and their functions some of the gsm identities and gsm radio concepts for any standardized system it should have to meet certain criteria so in like this in radio communication or mobile communication it should have a maximum spectrum efficiency international roaming should be there low mobile and uh, base station cost should be there good subjective voice quality is to be there compatibility with other systems such as isdn and ability to support new services will also be there so next what is a cell so cell is the basic geographic unit of a cellular system so uh, in our traditional mobile services or in case of television transmission there we are using a very powerful transmitter located at the highest spot in an area that would broadcast in a radius of up to 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers so the actual cellular concept structure the mobile telephone network in a different way so here instead of using one powerful transmitter many low power transmitters were placed throughout the coverage area so as per the subscriber density and a demand of a given area this size of the cells can be resized so cells are assigned a group of channels that is completely different from neighboring cells the coverage area of cells is limited by a boundary so that the same group of channels can be used in cells that are far enough apart in cellular concept the frequencies used in one cell can be reused in another cell some distance away so that concept is called the frequency reuse thereby we can achieve maximum spectral efficiency so frequency reuse offers very high capacity in a limited spectrum without to major technological changes and we can add the more number of cells as according to the population growth and there is a another concept called cluster a cluster is a group of cells in which no frequencies or channels are reused the number of cells per cluster can be termed as k and the valid values of this k can be found using the equation k is equal to i square plus j square plus i into j where i and j are just integers and k is called the reuse factor here you can see a seven cell cluster so each cell will use an separate frequency which will not be reused inside one cluster the frequencies used in one cluster will be reused in another cluster so that concept is called frequency reuse so here you can see the frequency used in second number of cell in this cluster will be reused in another cluster which is numbered as 2 here and what is the co channel cells the co channel cells is the same channel set that is the cells using the same channel sets are called co channel cells that is the co channels will be of different clusters which will use the same frequency sets for example a co channel neighbors of a particular cell if i is equal to 3 and j is equal to 
means that the value of k is equal to i square plus j square plus i into j that means k is equal to 19 the value of i is equal to 3 means to find out the co-channel cells of another cluster we can use this integers i is equal to 3 and j is equal to 2 so i is equal to 3 means here you can see it has an hexagon shape from any shape it have a 60 degree so from any one of the uh, side if i is equal to 3 you have to move forward 3 cells so 1 2 3 cells so this is i is equal to third cell so then when j is equal to 2 means from here from here you have to move or turn 60 degree anti-clockwise direction so you will get this direction and from there you have to move forward two cells that is j is equal to 2 so 1 2 so this is the co-channel cell of this cell so these two cells belong to two different clusters having a size of 90 then we will discuss about the different types of cells so first of all is macro cells macro cells means they are large cells for remote and sparsely populated areas in rural areas we can use this larger or macro cell to get maximum traffic or to, to accommodate more number of population or sufficient traffic so micro cells means small cells used for densely populated areas and pico cells are small cells whose diameter is only a few dozen meters that is it is used only for indoor applications in some areas it may not be required to having a 360 degree coverage so for example in case of a tunnel entrance of a tunnel we require only a selective coverage so in that case we use this selective cells so umbrella cell an umbrella cell covers several micro cells so used to it is used to reduce the number of handovers in case of a fast moving mobile subscriber the power level inside an umbrella cell is increased comparing to the power levels used in the micro cells that form the umbrella cell so when the speed of the mobile is too high the mobile is handed over to the umbrella cell so here you can see this is the umbrella cell the power level of the umbrella cell will be higher than these micro cells when the speed of the moving object or any car will or any mobile will go up greater than a certain limit the umbrella cell will take charge of that moving body another concept is cell sector which is used to increase the capacity of the cell or the system so it is also a way of reducing the level of interference here the cell is split into several sectors and each sector has separate transmit or receive antennas and behave as an independent cell it also increases the frequency reuse here we are using directional antenna at base stations with each antenna illuminating a sector of the cell and with a separate channel set allocated to each sector we have omnidirectional three sector cell and six sector cells so two commonly used method of sectorization is 60 sector 60 degree sector and 120 degree sector another concept is cell splitting 
it is the process of subdividing a congested cell into smaller cells each with its own base station so the congested available cell can be reduced that is uh, by reducing the adena height or by reducing the transmit power so cell splitting is an effective way to increase the system capacity so if more number of cells means there will be more number of clusters and more channels we have to use and capacity will also will be increase so it increases the number of times that channels are reused features of digital cellular system small cells frequency reuse small and battery powered handset performance of handovers when we discuss about objectives of mobile communication any time anywhere communication should be there mobility and roaming high capacity and subscriber density efficient use of radio spectrum will be there seamless network ar architecture low cost innovative services and standard interfaces so overall this cellular concept solves the problem of spectrum spectral congestion and increase the user capacity it offers very high capacity in a limited spectrum without major technological changes now discuss about some gsm identities imei number mc ms isbn tmc msr we will look one by one first is imei international mobile equipment identity it is an unique identity which is used internationally to identify a gsm mobile handset it is used to determine authorized that is white list unauthorized that is black list and malfunctioning that is gray list of gsm hardware it is used to ensure that only authorized users are granted access to the system so this three list will be stored in a register of msc called equipment identity register and ima is never sent in cipher mode by a mobile station so normally ima is a 15 digit code in some mobiles we can display this ima number by dialing star hash 06 hash next is mc international mobile subscriber identity it's an unique identity which is used internationally so it is also used within the network to identify a mobile subscriber the mc is fused in sim by the sim manufacturer on the basis of information provided by the elmn operator the total number of digit digit in mc shall not be more than 15 digit so for example it mainly the mc consists of three components mcc which is three digit mnc which is two digit and ms in which is maximum of 10 digit so for example uh, mcc we can use 404 or 405 it represents india and mnc for example the 68 is the mnc of a plmn of that is mtnl delhi and msisn is a plmn unique mobile subscriber identification number an example is shown here okay next is ms isdn mobile subscriber isdn number so this is an unique identity which is also used internationally and this is the number which is assigned to the mobile subscriber and registered in our telephone directories 
so it is the number used by the calling party for dialing it is used for routing purposes to address the hlr where the mobile station is registered it also consists of three components com country code national destination code which represents uh, the plmn and the subscriber number next is team c temporary mobile subscriber identity this number guarantees the integrity of mobile subscriber on the radio interface so it is designed to maintain the user confidentiality and it is used only over the radio path the team c is assigned by the vlr only after successful subscriber authentication another identity is msrn mobile subscriber roaming number the msrn is allocated on temporary basis when the mobile station roams into another numbering area it is used in gateway msc to set up connection to visited msc bar vela it's a temporary number used for routing call to mobile station hlr knows the current msc vlr service area for a mobile subscriber and this hlr requests that current msc vlr of the mobile station to allocate a msrn to the called subscriber and return to it and after receiving this msrn the hlr returns the same to gateway msc which can route the call to current msc bar vlr exchange the format of msrn again contains three components country code national destination code and subscriber number now discuss about the gsm network structure in the gsm system the network is divided into gsm service area plmn service area msc service area location area and the cells the gsm service is the total area served by the combination of all member countries where a mobile can be serviced the next level is the plmn service area this can be several within a country based on its size for example bsnl kerala circle is a plmn service area the next level of division is the msc vlr area so in one plmn there can be several msc vlr service areas so msc vlr is the sole controller of all calls within its jurisdiction the next level is that of the la that is location area within a msc vlr combination there are several location areas with one msc vlr combination the la is a part of the msc vlr service area in which a mobile station may freely with the um, freely move without updating the location information to the msc vlr exchange that control the location area lastly the location area is divided into many cells a cell is an identity served by one bts so the gsm system basically designed as a combination of three major subsystems mobile station and uh, the base station subsystem network switching subsystem and operation support subsystem we will look one by one here you can see the major network elements and the three components of the gsm network system 
the major network elements are mobile station, base transceiver station that is BTS, base station controller that is BSC, mobile service switching center that is MSC and the four databases associated with the MSC namely HLR, VLR, equipment identity register and authentication center. When we discuss about the main functions of the BTS, a GSM cell is made up of one BTS and consists of all the equipment and antennas needed to support the traffic and signaling channels for one cell. A single transceiver within BTS supports eight basic radio, cha radio channels of the same TDM frame. A BTS is a network component that serves one cell and is controlled by a BSC. BTS is typically able to handle 3 to 5 radio carriers. And this BTS provides the radio interface directly to the mobile station. And every BTS will be connected to only one BSC. And one BTS can have one or more number of transceivers. So this BTS performs many functions under the control of the BSC to coordinate connections with the mobiles. When we come to the uh, main functions of BSC, the main function is radio resource management for the cells under its control. And then assign it, uh, BSC assigns and release frequencies and time slots for all the mobile stations in its own area. It performs the inter cell handover for mobile stations moving between BTS in its control. It reallocates the frequencies to the BTS in its area to meet locally heavy demands during the peak hours or on special events. BSC controls the power transmission of both BSS and the mobile stations in its area. The minimum power level for a mobile unit is broadcast over the BCCH channel. Broadcast control channel. It's a logical channel. So the BSC provides the time and frequency synchronization reference signals. It also measures the time delay of a received mobile station signal relative to the BTS clock. If the received mobile station signal is not sended in its assigned time slot at the BTS, the BSC can direct the BTS to notify the mobile station to advance the timing such that the proper synchronization should take place. The main functions of the MSC are setup of calls in GSM mobile networks. The call handling function is controlled by the MSC and the MSC coordinates the setup of call to and from all GSM subscribers operating in its areas. GMSC works gateway to interconnect different PLMNs and PSTNs. MSC do the paging and resource allocation. It will do the location registration, encryption, and the dynamics allocation of dynamic allocation of access resources is done in coordination with the BSS. It also do the interrogation with the, the databases like HLR, VLR, AUC, and Equipment Identity Register EIR. Next is interworking function that is IWF, IWF. IWF is a part of MSC. It provides the subscriber with access to data rate and protocol conversion facilities so that the data can be transmitted between GSM data terminal equipment and a landline 
data terminal equipment that is our mobile to landline so it is the job of the iwf to provide this interfacing capability next is echo canceller so echo canceller is used on the pstn side of the msc for all voice circuits the ec is required at the msc pstn interface to reduce the effect of gsm delay when the mobile is connected to the pstn circuit next compound is hlr that is home location register the identity of mobile subscriber will be stored in this hlr the isdn directory number of the mobile station and the subscriber information on tele services and bearer services and the service restrictions if any is there and the supplementary services provided to the mobile subscriber and the location information for call routing all this information will be stored in the hlr home location register next is vlr visiting location register the vlr stores the identity of a mobile subscriber that is any temporary mobile subscriber identity isdn directory number of the mobile and a directory number which is a directory number to route the calls to a roaming station it stores the location area where the mobile station is registered that is a part of the subscriber data from the hlr will be stored in the visiting location register eir list equipment identity register this list contains white list or valid list that is list of valid ms mobile station equipment identities gray or monitored list which is the list of suspected mobiles under observation black or prohibited list which is the list of mobiles for which service is barred authentication center it contains the subscriber authentication data called authentication keys that is ki and the authentication center generates security related parameters needed to authorize service using ki it generates unique data pattern called a cipher key kc needed for encrypting user speech and data next is the uh, operation and maintenance center the functions of operation and maintenance center that is omcr is the centralized maintenance and diagnostic heart of the bss it allows the network provider to operate administer and to monitor the functioning of the bss the main functions include the alarm management fault management the remote handling performance management and the configuration management of the overall network next we will go to the gsm radio concepts in this session we will define the radio concept frequency spectrum of gsm the air interface the physical channels that is fdma and tdma and the logical channels so gsm radio concept when we discuss the air interface between the bts and the mobile station is eom interface the air interface is required for supporting the universal use of any compatible mobile station in a gsm network and also maximum spectral efficiency to achieve this higher maximum spectral efficiency in the cellular network a combination of frequency division multiple access and time division multiple access is used mainly there are two frequency bands are used in gsm one is 900 megahertz band and there is 1800 megahertz here you can see and this each frequency is again divided into eight time slots 
so that's why we call that a combination of TDMA and FDMA frame structure. In 900 MHz band, the uplink frequency is 890 to 915 MHz, and in downlink bandwidth is 935 to 960 MHz. So total of 25 MHz is the bandwidth in uplink and 25 MHz of bandwidth in the downlink. So the channel bandwidth of GSM system is 200 kilohertz. So therefore total number of 125 channels will be there. If one channel is used for guard band then total remaining usable channels will be 124 in the 900 MHz system. In 1800 MHz system the uplink frequency is 1710 to 1785 MHz. Downlink is 1805 to 1880 MHz and the total number of channels is 374 usable channels in the 1800 MHz spectrum. The frequency division multiple access in the GSM system means it involves the division of each frequency of 25 MHz band into 124 carrier frequencies. Actually it is 125, one is used for guard band and remaining 124 carrier frequencies are spaced 200 kilohertz for GSM 900 band. For GSM 1800 the frequency spectrum of the 75 megahertz bandwidth is divided into 374 usable carrier frequencies spaced 200 kilohertz. Time division multiple access means to increase the number of channels per carrier frequency here each carrier frequency the channel carries 8 time division multiplexed signals. So a mobile station can transmit this page data only during its assigned time slot. Next is the Abyss interface, that is the F interface between the BSC and the BTS. This interface comprises of traffic and control channels. The main functions are voice data traffic exchange, signaling between the BSC and the BTS, transporting synchronization information from the BSC to the BTS. There are two types of channels, one is the physical channel and the logical channels in the GSM concept. So physical channel means it is determined by the carrier frequency and the time slot number. That is it is a combination of frequency and a time slot. The logical channel means it is a flow of information and it can carry the control information or traffic and the logical channel can be used to broadcast to all or send to a specific mobile stations. So these logical channels are carried inside the physical channels. The total logical channels can be divided into traffic channel broadcast channels, common control channels and dedicated control channels. We will discuss one by one. The traffic channels are used to send speech or data services. There are two types of traffic channels. They are distinguished by their transmission rates. One is the traffic channel full rate. Another one is traffic channel half rate. The full rate traffic channel carries the information at a gross bit rate of 22.8 kilobits per second after the channel coding. The net bit rate at the TCH full rate is for speech it is 13 kbps and for data it is 12 
or 6 or 3.6 kbps before channel coding. The traffic channel half rate carries the information at a gross bit rate of 11.4 kbps. The net bit rate at the TCH half rate is for speech it is 6.5 kbps and for data it is 6 or 3.6 kbps. The next division is the broadcast channels. The information distributed over the broadcast channels helps the mobile station to orient themselves in the mobile radio network. The broadcast channels are point to multipoint channels which are only defined for the downlink direction that is from the BTS to the mobile station. Mainly there are four types of broadcast channels BCCH, FCCH, SCH and CBCH. BCCH means broadcast control channel. Through this broadcast control channel the mobile station is informed about the system configuration parameters. For example, location area identification, cell identity and neighbor cells. Using this information, the mobile station can choose the best cell to attach to. And this BCCH is also known as beacon. Next is frequency correction channel. To communicate with the BTS, the mobile station must tune to the BTS. The FCCH transmits a constant frequency shift of the radio frequency carrier that can be used by the mobile station for frequency correction. The next is synchronization channel that is SCH. The SCH is used to time synchronize the mobile station. That is the data on this channel carries the TDMA frame number and the base station identity code that is basic. Next is cell broadcast channel that is CBCH. It is used for the transmission of generally accessible information that is short message service messages in a cell which can be polled by the mobile station. The next classification is, classification is common control channel. The common control channels are specified as point to multi point channels which only operate in one direction of transmission either in the uplink or downlink direction. The types of common control channels are TCH that is paging channel, AGCH access grant channel, RICH random access channel. PCH is used in the downlink direction only for paging the mobile stations. RICH or random access channel is used in the uplink direction by the mobile stations for requesting a channel for a connection. It is an access channel that uses the slotted aloha access key. The AGACH that is access grant channel is also used in downlink direction. It is a logical channel for the connection. For a connection is allocated through the AGCH if the mobile station has requested such a channel through the RACH. Next classification is dedicated control channels. These are the full duplex point to point channels and they are used for signaling between the BTS and a certain mobile station. The types of dedicated control channels are SACCH, FACCH and FDCCH. The SACCH or slow associated control channel is a duplex channel which is always allocated to a traffic channel 
or a SD CCH that is standalone dedicated control channel. The slow associated control channel is used for transmission of signaling data, radio link supervision measurements, transmit power control and timing advance data. It is used only for non-urgent procedures. The fast associated control channel or FACCH is used as a main signaling link for the transmission of signaling data, for example handover commands. So it is also required for every call setup and release. During the call, the FACCH data is transmitted over the allocated TCH instead of traffic data. This is marked by a flag called a stealing flag and the process of stealing a TCH for FACCH data is called preemption. Next is SDCCH that is standalone dedicated control channel. It is a duplex point to point channel which is used for signaling in higher layers. It carries all signaling between the BTS and the mobile station when no TCH is, TCH is allocated. The STCCH are used for service requests, for example SMS or location updates, subscriber authentication, ciphering, initiation, equipment validation and assignment to a TCH. The net SDCCH bitrate is about 0.8 kbps. So that's all for this session. So far we have discussed about the cellular principles, GSM architecture and the GSM radio concept. Thank you for your participation. Thank you.